because it's just, we're trying to get a lot of information in this chapter. I want to get to integrals. So I'm sort of jumping ahead and showing you this idea. If you see this integral, these are our bounds. This is A and this is B. And what it's saying is basically um, find the area under the curve of 2x from 0 to 3. That's, that's what this integral is. The way that we do it, can I give you a preview to just show you? Because we we're talking about this antiderivative. We use the thing called the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay. So the way that we're going to get to the integration of this, this is an integral, and we're going to integrate it. And so the way you integrate it is you take the antiderivative. So what's the antiderivative with all of our practice from class yesterday of 2x? Good. So it's x squared. Instead of adding the plus C, we are going from zero to three. So I do X squared from zero to three. So that's my bound. And then all you do, the fundamental theorem of calculus basically says, I love it. It's the fundamental theorem of calculus. It says that if you have an integral from A to B of F of X, DX, I'll talk about the DX when we get into more details. It's equal to F of B, Remember, big F was the antiderivative minus F of A, okay? So I'm taking this antiderivative and I'm plugging in my bounds. So I take three squared minus zero squared and I get nine. That's gonna be the area. They want us to do it using a geometric thing. I'm curious to see if they're estimating. So it should be exact. That's the cheater way, but now let's look at it geometrically because it's pretty cool. Sometimes you can interpret um, these geometrically. Can you tell I love definite integrals in the fundamental theorem of calculus? It's pretty cool, right? So let me um, get a little wide out down here so we can see this a little better. And once again, Detailed solutions, those are nice. You can use those as often as you need to. So for geometrically what's happening is, what is 2x? What is that curve? Well, it's a line, has a slope of two. So it's up two over one, up two over one. So, and I'm going from zero to three. So here's one, 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 two. Um, two is at four, right? One, two, uh, two, three, four. And three is at three times two, which is six, right? And the slope, you can just go up two over one. It's really hard to draw straight lines on these tablets. <laughs> but I have a right triangle. You see it? Okay, so this is my curve. Everybody okay with this being 2x? And I'm going from zero to three. And so I just need to calculate the area of this rec or triangle, which is one half base. What's the base here? Three. Height is, this point right here is at three six, right? So what's the height? Good. So if I calculate that, I also get nine, okay? So this is geometric calculating. This is integration and fundamental theorem of calculus. got to get to the fundamental theorem of calculus before you end Calc 1, right? So how many of you have seen integration? Riley, you've seen it. Juan, have you seen it a little bit? I think so. Yeah. Okay, so that's where we're going. That's as far as we're going to get to in 5.3. Um, but you can see why we needed to practice our antiderivatives. 
And for now, we're going to estimate these using Riemann sums. That's what I want to focus on for class tomorrow in 5.2, and then get to the fundamental theorem of calculus in 5.3, okay? So I do find that students get really hung up on Riemann sums, but it's nothing to get hung up on. So let's, let's talk about how to interpret this. Um, these are just using properties, just so you know, and there is a detailed solution, but basically, guess what? If you have a constant in front of an integral like this too, you get to bring it out front. So the answer to this is just two times 19, 38, right? Because this two is a little addition. So if I know that this definite integral is equal to 19, then the two can come out front of that integral, just like we've done with limits, just like we've done with differentiation. It's a beautiful thing. Constants just stay out front. They don't go away, but they stay out front. So I, I just can't help myself. Let's try this one, question four. It says, approximate the area under the curve um, y equals x squared from three to six using a right endpoint approximation with six subdivisions. Has anybody started this, by the way? Did you? Yeah. A little, where, how far did you get? Oh, the other one? Yes. Um, no. You're done? Oh, this one's oh okay, okay, okay. Yes. Okay, okay. Okay, so um, first start with sketching it. And like, these are the most important, x equals three and x equals six. Hey, so I'm wondering, I'm not, I'm actually not, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hand draw. I was gonna say, I could just use Desmos, which is nice. Would that be okay? Would you mind if I use Desmos just for graph paper? It just makes it nicer, um, but you have to sketch it. You have to do it. Is it X squared? Was that the function for me? Oh, okay. Let's see what mine is again. Oh yeah, mine's X squared, but that's okay. I could do a different one if you wanted. What do you all have? X squared? Jillian, you got the harder one. That's okay. So we're going to do x squared, and I can help you, but I think it's similar. And I need a 3 to 6, so I'm going to focus on the 3 to 6, and I need to have all those windows. This actually might be better if I just do a change my settings. So I'm going to go from this way, 0 to um, 7, and uh, 0 to... Let's do like negative one, actually. Okay. One, two, I'll just have a little axis. And then up to six squared, which is, uh, well, what's 636? I'm gonna say 40. There we go. Is that okay? I just need a, I need the curve and it needs to be in the domain and range from we're going from three, actually. I don't really need, since I'm going from three to six, I could zoom in a little more, but maybe that's okay. We'll keep it like that so we can see it. That sound good to everybody? Uh-oh, I liked that better. I just like to see all of them. All right, so this is my thing. I'm going from X equals three to six. I'll show you the thing one more time so you can see. And I'm using a right endpoint with approximately, or with approximation of six subdivisions. So that's a lot to remember. So write it down. X. And um, how many subdivisions does anybody remember? Six. six. So that's the number of subdivisions, n equals six. That's your subdivisions. And it might be fun to just draw it first. And it was a right-hand estimation, right? 
So in that case, if you start here and you end here and you need to figure out how many um, or what the distance is, that's the delta x part. So the change in x is equal to the difference between the two. So this is your six div minus three divided by your number of some subdivisions. So that would be six. And if you wanted to generalize that number, right? Delta X would be B minus A divided by N, okay? So just as a general rule, does that make sense on how we would find the width of each of these? Okay, so um, in this case, what is the width of each of these rectangles? One half, right? Good, three over six, which is one half. So I'm going to do um, one half here, here, and I used to have like lines. Oh, yeah. So help me draw straighter lines. Oh, I also have to do right. I have to do right on the. <sighs> I, the old um, Zoom used to be so much better. The annotate, I need to reach out and say, hey, fix this. Okay, so let's see. Let's just count. Did we get the number, the correct number? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six subdivisions. And I started on the right. So is that going to be an overestimate or an underestimate of area under the curve? Over, right? Because it's um, it's an increasing function. So you can kind of see. And Jillian, just for fun, what is your what's your what are you going from on your cubic? Two from two to four, so what's four? Okay. So delta Okay. The fun thing is with a cubic while I'm drawing is um, if you went from like because it's a it's an odd function. Um, we're gonna get to this, but I'm gonna just spoiler alert give it to you. If you have a curve that dips below the x-axis, that counts as negative area. So anything below the curve is a negative area. Anything above and below that curve to the x-axis bounded is positive. So thinking about a cubic, if you went from integrated from negative two to two, your answer would be zero because the negative area would cancel out the positive area. So it's just, but we're not. Yeah. So thinking about this and breaking it down and knowing what endpoints I use, um, from this point, now we can just kind of write it out and be systematic. You could even go into Desmos, right? And just type it. So let me just, maybe I'll do that. It's probably easier to read anyways. So I know that point um, five is the width of each of those. So I could actually just do point five and then add up each of the endpoints, like the function at that point. Um, maybe I'll write it out so you can see what I'm doing and where I'm going with this. So 0.5, I know, times this endpoint. So this is 3.5, 4, 4.5, 5, 5.5, 5, 5, and 6. I'm going to use 6. I'm not going to use 3, right? Because I'm doing a right-hand estimate of the sums. Okay, so for the first one, it's um, in my function, remember, is... 3.5 squared. So I could write it as 3.5 squared plus 0.5 times this area right here is four. That's my second rectangle plus 0.5 times 4.5 squared plus 0.5 times. Oh, did I miss four? Oh, it got to square it. And then 0.5 times 5.5 squared. And I got to do one more 0.5 times six squared. 
like so. So you can just double check and make sure you have six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes, Calvin? Um, the function itself. Yeah. And so think about, can somebody answer, Calvin, why are they squared? Yeah, so this graph is x squared. So I need the height of each of these rectangles. So I've got to plug in the x value into my function, right, to get that height. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah? Okay. So now I'm just going to type it out. And notice that 0.5, you could just put out front. It'll save you some time. So it's 3.5 squared. If you have a more complicated function, remember you could also call the define the function and then just do f of four, f of 3.5 and so on. 3.5 squared, four squared, um, 4.5 squared. I keep forgetting the plus. Yeah, and if you want to try your own as you're working, go for it. I see Jillian, are you checking? Um, but I put in 36, totally. Okay. Um, I think I got it one, two, three, four, five, six. Does that make sense to everybody? So 69.875. We did it, everybody. I'll go back to that so you can see it. I scrunched it, didn't I? I moved my thing by doing that. internet slow. I know they had to finally give me because I kept getting booted off um, a direct. So I'm doing that, but I think it's just, there's so many, so many students logging on in these classes. It makes it challenging. It's annoying. Sorry. Okay. So um, does that make sense? And that's basically what the kind of stuff that we're going to be talking about. Um, Let's, let's look through some more problems. I'm going to delete this. Is that okay? Um, evaluate the Riemann sum for ln of x minus 1 over the interval 1 to 5 using eight subintervals, taking the sample points to write endpoints. Why don't you all try yours? Can you, can you look up yours and do yours? The internet isn't working, dang it. Oh, good question on Zoom. So what does the DX do? And um, the, D, the DX is, once again, we have that differential. Um, and DX is the same as the Delta X. I should have shown you with that last image, but remember Delta X is the, it's the, it's the width of the rectangle. And so the Delta X, think of the Delta X when we transition from a Riemann sum to a definite integral, that's where we're going with it. The, the Delta X and the Riemann sum goes over to a Delta or a DX in a definite integral. So it's kind of the same thing. It's this. It's the width of the the little sliver. Okay. Is it working at all or no? You could try mine. Do you want to just try mine for practice? Oh dang it! Ah. So if you have your own, go for it. Maybe I'll just work on mine here while you work on yours. Does that sound good? Yeah? Do you, are you able to cue yours up from your own? Cool. Sorry. 
to forget. Find it's negative. Yeah, uh, that's okay. Do you get a negative? Did it dip down below? Yes, yeah, so. Um, what was your function? Uh, L of x minus uh, minus point seven point one to one of four. Okay. And I'm going, I'm going from one to five. So that's a great question. So Juan, you got a negative. Anything that's below is going to um, be negative area and anything that's above is going to be positive. So I will draw my picture as you draw yours. Okay. And work on yours. And to get a nice window, I'm going to go... I don't need to go quite so far, so I'm gonna say maybe a negative one. So I'm going from one to five. So. Any luck, Jillian? Uh, so sorry. I'll I'll I've already recorded it once, but um I'm going from x equals one to five. And just to get us all on the same page, what this means is, and from 5.3, a little preview is I'm integrating from one to five this function ln of x minus one. Dx is my little strip. That's my sliver. And yeah. So we're we're estimating this. What's that? It's just it's it's kind of like um it tells us, you know how we used to say dy dx when we differentiated? It's it's sort of telling us it's with respect to what variable as well, you can think of it that way. Um, it gives you the idea of like what variable you're working on. And as far as our relation to Riemann sums, it's telling us that we are dealing with um, a rectangle, not a rectangle, we're dealing, yeah, we're dealing with rectangles and this is like our dx or delta x. So for me, I'm going from one to five. So like I said, to find delta x, I take my big bound minus my lower bound. And, um, oh shoot, did I write how many? I need eight rectangles in mine. So it's four over eight. One half again. And I'm going from one to five. So I zoomed in just so I could see that. And I'm also doing a right estimate. So there's this first one. And it's always based on the function. Here's the second. So each of these widths are one half. And the third is going to be right here. So it's this little one, right? It's the area bounded by the x-axis and the curve, OK? And then three is going to be an upper. It's not a beautiful sketch, but it's this rectangle. So these are all my one half. And three and a half. So this is a overestimate. I have a feeling mine's going to be positive. I think I have more above that I'm estimating them below. Does that make sense on the visual? 
So then I can say each of these are one half. I don't need to take the time to do that. I could take the time to write down the numbers. This is at the 1.5 mark, right? I'm starting at one. Here's 1 1.5, here's two. Kind of scribbled them in 2.5. So basically if my function is this, I think I'm gonna be lazy and I'm gonna say in Desmos, let f of x equal ln of x minus one. And then I'm gonna say, let's what's f of uh, 1.5 plus f of two plus f of 2.5 plus f of three plus f of 3.5 plus f of four plus f of 4.5 and plus f of five, because I'm doing a right endpoint again. Okay. Does this make sense? Yes, Carly. If it was a left one. Yeah. So we would start if it was a left one, we could talk about that. Um, everything would be shifted over by half a unit. I would start at one. Oh. And so I would be doing this one sliver of a rectangle. Um, it would be like that. So I could do that in a different color. So if we said left, right, left, right, no, just kidding. It would be this. So it'd be from one, the width would still be the same. So it'd be F of one um, plus F of uh, 1.5. So this would be more negative area space, right? Plus dot, dot, dot. My last one would be plus F of 4.5. Does that make sense? So then here's 4.5. So that these would be underestimates on the upper part because you're doing left-hand bounds. Make sense? Yeah. And three is going to be really tiny. So that answer would probably give you a more negative estimate. This one's probably going to do positive is my guess. Does that make sense? Okay. So um, let's just calculate it. So I'm going to just do 0.5 again times. Oh, I got to just define my function. F of X. Whoops. Okay, so that's a nice thing in Desmos. If you define it, then you can just do f of one, f of just like it, save yourself some time. Oops, I'm doing the left hand, I gotta do the right. Yeah. So I got nine for my answer. Um, I'm not gonna mess up. Well, I already messed up my picture, didn't I? How did that happen? Did I, oh, I deleted my Ellen of X. Huh. There we go. <laughs> that's gonna change my answer. So <laughs> oh, that's all right. That's yes. 0. 0.4330. Let's see if that's. So it's the same thing we just did. Just a yeah. Yeah. So, you know, my open math likes it if you go, it says report answers accurate to six. Remember not to round. Um, just go out like three or four decimal places and you should be okay. Okay. I wonder if I go out three. Oh, it didn't like it. 
0.434. Wow. So you have to go out a little ways, 0.433. Wow, okay, so you have to go out a little ways, longer. Yay, yeah, so it really does mean it when they say six decimal places. I like to challenge it. Okay, um, questions on that? Does that make sense with Riemann sums? Okay. Um, Do you want to do any others or just want to do some work at this point? Yeah, Calvin. Yeah. Uh huh. That's a great question. So we're going to talk about. So Calvin was asking about question two. There's no C. No C is necessary when you have a defined integral. And that's the difference between a definite integral and an indefinite integral. So if you looked at, in this case, this is defined because it has A and B. You'll also see integrals like this, F of X DX. So this is equal to big F of X plus C because there are no bounds, it's indefinite. So when we don't have a defined area that we're trying to calculate and it's just undefined, then we have to attack on the C because this could take on a variety of shapes versus this one, it's a definite integral. It's defined as F of three minus F of zero. How would you do the definite? Um, because for families of functions and just keeping it general, or maybe to create formula. So then you could look at the area under the curve of a car for any specific bounds and then just plug in the values later. There's all kinds of reasons why we look at indefinite and definite in applications, keeping it general until necessary. Yeah, good questions. Any other question? Okay, I think that's enough. Um, just give you some time. I'm just gonna keep scrolling through and looking, seeing if there's any others. Um, there are lots of nice detailed solutions on this, as you can see. We talked about question three, we just did that one. Um, we didn't do a midpoint. Do not use the integral or antiderivative to approximate that. So we could, we could cheat, but you're not gonna get the right answer. Do you wanna do one more? Do you wanna do the midpoint one? And you can be working on yours with me. Okay, let's just do that because I am recording and then we'll have it. So let's see, I'm gonna write it down. And then we'll, if it's okay, does Desmos work for everybody? It's so much easier to visualize. And I'm going from five to 35. And I'm doing midpoints. And luckily they didn't give us too many rectangles that they're requiring. Okay. So in Desmos. We have X. I'm going to call it F of X. So then I can just have a function equals x squared. And everybody, I am more than happy with you using Desmos for this part, right? To do any of the practices, because this is a lot of number crunching, right? So it's nice to draw these, but it's also, this is just giving us an understanding about area under the curve. And um, it takes a little bit of time. So let's go to a home window to get kind of a basic idea. I know it's a parabola, it's, it's smiling. And I'm going from zero to 35. So this would be better to change your settings and go from zero to 35. And I don't know, we could go from a, a zero up to 
I wonder if I can do 35 squared. Because that's, wait, where did it go? Oh, I didn't finish it. Um, here, let's figure out what f of 35 is. So I need to go up to 1161. Oh, I didn't. Yeah. I went too far. I took it to 11. So let's do 1170. Huh. Maybe I just, my range. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Dang it. Okay. It's very confused at me right now. So I'm going up to 35 for my X's. And I'm going to stay down here. Huh. There. That's prettier, right? Pretty. So midpoints, let's first calculate the width. We're going from, um, 35 minus five, because that's X equals five to 35 divided by, and I want five rectangles. So to calculate the delta X, that's gonna be 35 minus five. Ooh, we actually get a nice even number. You don't have to deal with fractions. That's nice, so six. <laughs> so starting at five, hmm. I'm gonna do one more thing over here. I wonder if I could change my step. This is this is fancy. Oh. <laughs> is that cheating? <laughs> oh wait, did I start? But I'm starting at five, so that's not gonna help me. Um, but let's do a step at least of something that's nice. What should we our step be? Let's go by trees. Will that work? You're starting at no. It's saying no, you can't do that step. Okay, that's okay. We're just going to estimate. So um, as far as my midpoint goes, locating the midpoint might be the hardest. I know that the width is six and I'm starting at five. So here's five. Um, and I have to go, I'm going up to six with the width. So then I'm going to go to 11. And what's halfway between five and 11? That's where I need to estimate, do my function value. Does that make sense? So even, you know, what might help is like, you could say half of that is three. So to calculate that midpoint, I need an eight right in between. So that's my focus is I'm going to calculate the F of eight value here. And this is going to be the height of my rectangle is whatever this midpoint is at. Does that make sense? How do we get what? 11. Well, I just, I know that the width of each of the rectangles is 11. So maybe we could even start there. We could say, okay, so 11, and then I'm at um, 18. And then I'm gonna be at 24. And then I'm gonna be at 30 right on the dot. And then I'm gonna be at 30. Let's see, I'm gonna be at 30. Oh, wait a second. Am I not counting? Did I do some bad math? 35 minus five, 30 divided by five. That's six rectangles. If I start at five with a width of six, did I do so? Oh, <laughs> 17. I was counting. So that's 
17, then it should be 23. Then it's going to give me 29. Then I can end at 35, right? It should always work your widths. Does that make sense? Okay. So then I've got to do half of this width is the midpoint. Do you all agree? So half of six would give the midpoint location. So I start at five because that's my starting place. Then I add three to that. That's eight. I'm going to calculate that. Then three plus 11, this is going to be 14. So I'm going to calculate the F of 14. And the height of this rectangle is a width of six. Whoops, went too far. Width of six and a height of F of 14. Make sense? And the next one is going to be um, take 17. And I'm going to add, like, so this is my, oops. I'm going to 20. I think my just my numbers are off a little, everybody. I should 23 should be over here a little bit more. So then forgive me for that. Um, 23 is here. I know that this is the width. Halfway is 20. Let's fudge 20 over just for the picture. And so my midpoint is here. Does that make sense? So I'm doing F of 20. It might be easier to just sketch this by hand on this one. And then, um, so 20 is the midway, 23, and then 26 is halfway in between. So here's 26. Okay, six times the F of everything. Yes, yep. So I guess the hardest part is finding your midpoint. So this is F of 26. And then my last midpoint, 29 plus three is gonna be 32. So. 32, and that's your midpoint. You can kind of see that a midpoint estimate sometimes might be the most accurate because it takes a little, it does a little overestimating, a little underestimating. Ask that question one more time, Riley. Yeah, I guess it depends on if you want. So that was a good question. If you want, a con does concavity matter? I think they're just going to tell you which way to do it, left or right. No, no. Sometimes like the handout that I gave you, we didn't get to it, but we might talk about it on like just counting all the squares. You can just count them unless they specify that they want to midpoint a right hand or a left hand. Okay. Cool. So then let's just check, let's just do this. Um, I've got my function defined, so that should work. And I'm gonna say my width, like you said, Juan, is six times everything. So F of eight plus F of 14 plus, the other way, how, what's another way you could do this that would be pretty easy is I'm realizing what's the difference between each of the midpoints? What's the width? Six, right? So once you locate the first midpoint, F of eight, which is like three plus the left bound, just add six to each of yours to check. So see eight, 14, 20 plus F of 26 plus F of 32. It's a big bound, but that was a big number. So 13, one, four, zero. Okay, I'll go back to the picture um, and I am recording this so you can see. Do you wanna integrate it? I'm gonna show you how to integrate it just for fun. Okay. So that might be a five. Hmm? Okay, make sense. Let's um let's just integrate it. Um, we're going from five to thirty-five. I'll do it over here so then we can use the calculator to calculate it. So using um this idea, this is the notation for it. I'm trying to find the area, 
and this will be exact area under f of x from, uh, what was it, 5 to 35. So the way you write that in math notation, 5 to 35, my function is x squared minus 2x plus 6. dx just tells me it's with respect to x. That is the, these are the various heights of the rectangles. This is the width, kind of. That's how I think of it. And now I need to take the antiderivative. So what's the antiderivative of x squared? Mm -hmm. Good. What's the antiderivative of 2x? Good. What's the antiderivative of 6? And I'm going from 5 to 35. So this is a definite integral. And so now I just plug in this into Desmos. So I've got, um, I'm just going to do it into Desmos. You'll be able to see it that way. So I've got 35 cubed divided by 3 minus 35 squared plus 6 times 35. And then minus, but be careful because it's everything. And let me just write that so everybody knows. Remember, the fundamental theorem of calculus says it takes your antiderivative, you plug in 35 to the antiderivative minus f of 5 to the antiderivative. So that means when you're doing this, use parentheses to be extra careful. So then we have 5 squared. Check my, um, make sure I'm not five cubed over three, whoops. And then it's minus five squared plus six times five. I think I plugged in everything okay. So look at how close we are. This is the exact, pretty good. So we underestimated a little bit. Okay. Isn't that cool? So this would be the exact area under the curve. This is the estimation by using a midpoint. Okay, cool. We covered some ground. Yeah, that was fun. Thanks everybody.